Good morning and welcome to Our Issues Milwaukee. I'm your host, Andrea Williams. Our focus this morning is on politics. Tuesday, August 9th is the primary election in Wisconsin and offices on the ballot include U.S. Senator, U.S. Representatives, all Wisconsin Assembly seats, all District Attorneys, and the even-numbered Wisconsin State Senate seats. My first guest has served three terms in the Wisconsin State Senate, representing the 4th Senate District, which includes the Village of Shorewood, portions of Wauwatosa, Glendale, and the North and Northwestern portions of the City of Milwaukee. It's a pleasure to welcome incumbent State Senator Lena Taylor. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Well, thank you for finding the time to be here. I know you're busy, but uh, you were elected to the 4th Senate District back in 2004. That's correct. And That's looking, sworn in in 05. Okay. And so looking back, uh, what accomplishments would you say you are most proud of? When you look at the numbers and you see that um, I've authored 101 pieces of legislation, it's pretty amazing. Um, more than uh, 600, almost 700 uh, pieces of legislation that I authored, but to get 101 written into law mm -hmm. um, is amazing within itself. I'm extremely proud of the work that I've been able to do related to um, the justice system, whether it is getting training statewide for police officers to deal with health and mental health issues, mm -hmm. whether it's changing the Fire and Police Commission or the justice reinvestment work, all exciting pieces of legislation or regulating the payday loans mm -hmm. um, so that we were not the only state that didn't have them, or the millions of dollars that I've been able to get to education and creating um, accountability in the voucher program. I think um, the Milwaukee Parental Choice Program had no um, uh, high school diploma requirement no bachelor's degree, no certification for teachers. Hmm. Um, I authored all of those pieces uh, and more than a $130 million easily that I've been able to get uh, to NPS just consistent funding and poverty aid and, and additional count days. So those are just a few <laughs> things that I can think of off the top of my head, but it's exciting when you can do something and even when you lose control, when your party is no longer in control and the other party keeps that. Mm -hmm. I think all those things I mentioned are things that are like that. So it's, it, it makes me proud. Yeah, and you have every reason to be proud because all of the things that you've just mentioned have really made a difference when it comes to people who are living here in the state of Wisconsin as well as, of course, the city of Milwaukee. So looking forward, uh, what would you like to accomplish if you are reelected? You know, one of the things I really always say is we lead in the nation in incarceration of African-American mm -hmm. men per capita and actually uh, Native Americans, uh, it looks like we're there also. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like not to be right. that. Um, so until that's different, I won't stop. Okay. Um, and so the correction reform items that we would be able to do and that I'm hoping to do um, through the Ledge Council Committee, study committee, that we've been assigned to to deal with reentry and reducing recidivism and the challenges mm -hmm. that individuals have on reentry. That's important to me because to stop that pipeline, I think, is to allow families to be stronger. It's to help to rebuild communities if we don't have so many of our citizens um, away. Uh, from the community, but it's also important for me for us to change our outcomes in education. Um, I don't want to be a place where we fluctuate in leading in suspensions, and I'm excited that I was able to help craft what some people had called um, a takeover. Ultimately, we did a compromise that worked with the state superintendent, mm -hmm. and we were able to change us from being number one in suspensions to being able to change that using um, PBSI, I think it's called, um, behavioral uh, program okay. that they've used that changed us because we led in the nation. It's one place we didn't discriminate. Black kids, white kids, Hispanic kids, we were number one in the nation in wow. suspension, which is just a pipeline of prison. So those are two areas, education and correction reform or justice reform. Okay, and that's awesome to hear you say because um, when we look at the 53206 zip code, mm -hmm. uh, your district includes uh, that area, which I is- I live in 53206, okay. as a matter of fact, I'm Lena on the block. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not like Jennifer Lopez, I'm not from the block, I'm on the block that I grew up on, okay? 
<laughs> and I that's gotcha. 53206, and you're right. All of those things. Unemployment. I mean, mm -hmm. my Love and Faith initiative addresses the violence and some justice and education issues, but it really also helps people to connect to industry mm -hmm. because in 53206, the unemployment is outrageous. Yeah, and it's considered to be the most incarcerated zip code yes. in the nation. There are currently over 22,000 inmates incarcerated in Wisconsin prisons and over 66,000 individuals on probation or parole. And you did mention uh, the Legislative Council Study Committee on reducing recidivism and removing impediments to ex-offender employment. So uh, very important for you to have that responsibility considering you live in the 53206 zip code. So uh, there is some passion there, definitely. Most definitely, as a mm -hmm. matter of fact, it really has been my life journey. Mm -hmm. I became a lawyer because I wanted to help to change the system. Uh, after becoming a lawyer, I became a legislator because I saw we needed to change the right. laws. And the one thing I would argue that most people know, one of my colleagues, uh, Representative Hutton often says, uh, I say my fingerprints are on everything, you know, related to justice. <laughs> And he says, yes, and even your footprint. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, and anybody that knows you knows what that means. <laughs> Everybody knows that uh, Lena on the block doesn't uh, really take any mess, right? <laughs> Listen, I am about serving my community and serving my constituents, and whether it is Shorewood or Glendale and getting money for them and opportunities for them, or whether it's dealing with issues that they have, or Milwaukee or Wauwatosa, um, you know, rolling up my sleeves and doing the work for the mm -hmm. people and candidly for the state because when I vote as a ranking member of the finance committee, I don't get to say, well, this is only for, mm -hmm. you know, my block. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. is only for my district. And, uh, and I say that jokingly, but, you know, it has been in the headlines that you say what you really uh, believe, you say what you're thinking. Sometimes you say what other people are thinking and are afraid to yes, say. So uh, that takes a certain kind of personality to be able to do that. Do you ever sometimes look back and say, what was I thinking? <laughs> there are definitely times that I've said even on the floor, can it? Can I not be the one that, have to, that has to say it? Uh -huh. You know, I don't want to be the one that talks <laughs> about, you know, our problems with diversity mm -hmm. or um, our issues with our justice system. So it's exciting when someone else does. But it also means it's like having a big target, right? Yeah. Because you're the one speaking up. And so are there times that I wish I didn't have to? You know, some days it's hard being Lena, but that's who God made me. Uh, yeah, and you don't have to apologize for I, being who you are. I that's can't, girl. Sure. I can't, girl. I have to embrace it and fling myself <laughs> in my purpose. Okay? Now, we have talked about uh, some of the issues already, uh, but there uh, is the issue of the Opportunity Schools and Partnership Program, and you were here in January, mm -hmm. and uh, we discussed uh, that whole legislation, which was presented by Republican senators, and you have doctors in the budget and I opposed that mm -hmm. and really fought against it but as you were about to say Dr. Means um, was the person that got appointed mm -hmm. I know Dr. Means I know the work that he's done uh, and I really was excited and candidly uh, although I know no one wanted to really embrace the legislation at all um, I believe that what he crafted was truly the best opportunity that we could have within the frame mm -hmm. of that law. Mm -hmm. He gave us, the, let us count the kids, he let us keep the money, he let us keep the teachers, he let them stay in the union, he said we can get the, the whole school back, so to say, or have control mm -hmm. in the way that NPS normally does in five years. Um, I don't know that that'll happen with someone else and that concerns me depending on who that person is and so it's kind of like voter ID. I fought it to the end mm -hmm. and take it to court and fight it too but you still have to obey the law mm -hmm. and that's as, that that's the piece mm -hmm. that is challenging for me because we tell people to go to the polls and take your ID and as a matter of fact go to your polls go to the polls <laughs> on August 9th and take your ID yes. and I hope you vote for me if you're in the fourth <laughs> Senate district but um, that's not what they're doing with the other issue and they're saying 
you know, they're not at the table, and I'm always afraid when you're not in the room yeah. and they're talking about things. Yeah, and that's because uh, Milwaukee County Executive Chris Abley sat right there not too long ago, and he was trying to uh, let our viewers know what he thought would happen if this was not approved. And now Dr. Means has resigned, saying that really it's just too much, you know, and he doesn't think the kids deserve uh, the back and forth. So mm -hmm. in your opinion, now what? Well, unless the Democrats were to take control of the Senate, which is possible, um, I don't anticipate that they're repealing this law. Mm -hmm. um, and if they're not repealing the law, then there will need to be compliance with it. And um, I know that No Child Left Behind, um, at least equivalent to, I don't know, it has to be, it was six years then, so it has to be more than six years of being at least three years of failure, then you your money can be held mm -hmm. by the state. So I'm just saying I don't know yeah. what it's individuals kinda up will in do. The but air yes, at this and, point, and it's yeah. very unsettling because and that's why it's important for people to go to the polls and really understand where people stand and yes. understand that there are circumstances behind uh, everybody that gets into office because everybody has different agendas and so that's why it's important for you to be here today to help us understand where you stand. And there's no question I've been a champion for education, mm -hmm. for public education. I mean millions of dollars that I've helped the school district get, that I've helped schools around the state um, through, as I mentioned earlier, the count day and all of those pieces. Yeah. And so I think experience matters. Um, I've been consistent on this issue. Um, and my opponent often says, I am the voucher candidate, but he went to a voucher school. His mother ran a voucher school for a long time until about a year ago. And more importantly, he doesn't put that on his bio. He's not transparent about those issues. And to suggest that I somehow, someone who has not won vote with Governor Walker and the GOP for um, expanding vouchers, never have I voted for that. As a matter of fact, I um, even believe that something that was quoted in the Journal Sentinel was inaccurate, saying that I supported expansion because I did not support mm -hmm. any expansion of the voucher program. However, I will say this, it does upset me that we um, lose dollars through the way that the equalization formula is and the NPS has to pay out a percentage. They used to pay out when I first got elected about almost 50% mm -hmm. of dollars to the voucher program that they got. Now I've gotten it down to 25.6%. It was me okay. that did legislation <laughs> to be able to change those pieces. So. You know, it, it is frustrating when um, there is discrepancies in the truth mm -hmm. from my opponent. Okay, well, uh, it, it's the game of politics, I well, guess. Well, you know, so. <laughs> it's the game of politics and how people choose to play it. I've ran against people before, mm -hmm. but we've done it based on the truth Okay. and the record. I mean, he says the same thing related to payday loans. And he says, you know, I didn't support a 36% cap, but what he fails to tell people is that there was no regulation of payday loans before we were able to get legislation and we compromised mm -hmm. and the 36% cap is higher than even an amount that I previously did in legislation. So I say that to say, tell the truth. Okay. You know, but when you don't have a record, I assume that's why you make stuff up. All right, and I am just thankful that you were able to come by and give us some perspective on where you stand on the issues. Of course, there are so many other issues, and we could probably talk all day. We could, but uh, people could go to <laughs> Lena Taylor. That's right. Dot org and they can find uh, literally all of the different things I've done. They can go to Wisconsin Eye mm -hmm. and watch you know, my speeches on whether it's voter ID or education funding or what I've done for small businesses, mm -hmm. minority owned businesses. I mean, I fought that fight literally solo. Uh, so there's just so much work yeah. that I've done in over a decade, and I hope to be able to continue to do that work. All right. Well, we thank you thank for you. coming by, and I should mention there is no Republican that's running, so this primary uh, means everything. That's it's it. It's all on the line, it. so it's important for people to get out and vote. Thank you so much. Thank you for Always having me. Always a pleasure. And State Senator Lena Taylor is again running for re-election to represent the 4th Senate District. For more information about Senator Taylor and where she stands on the issues, again, you can log on to lenataylor.org. When we return to our issues Milwaukee. We're going to meet Senator Taylor's opponent for State Senator Representative Mandela Barnes and we'll do that right after this.